Hello Vinny. Um, can you show us how did you draw Comic Sans? I used photographer yeah. back in 90, 1994 and this is a newer version but all I did was grab this tool which is a round drawing tool. You can just do that and that and that and you have a C. Cool. So you keep, I kept drawing it and drawing it and drawing it and then I went in and refined it because obviously like the proportions for the sure and you wouldn't always go because you were doing it freehand and it would land below the baseline too far or something so you had to grab it and shove it up and so you tweak it but basically the shape was doing that over and over and over and over again until you got something that looked like what you wanted and that's what I did it's the contrary of um typography based on handwriting because like it's the other way around the computer is right yeah it's not because every letter is going to be the same every time yeah because we weren't using open type or any fancy features so i had to realize that it was always going to be the same letter so it's hard to make it look like handwriting and comic lettering is handwritten and this wasn't copying comic lettering it was just to do something in, of that cartoon style. Excofon with Mistral tried to reproduce typographically handwriting of a man from the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And with Comic Sans, it's a bit like you've managed to canonize the digitalized writing of the 1920s. It was done at a time when we were able to do that. We were able to do what you just did. We were first able to draw in the tool that was going to make the font. And so everybody was drawing directly in the program that you were going to finish the font in. And that was probably a first. It would it'd be equivalent to somebody cutting punches that was actually that was actually the type being printed, which wasn't the case. And certainly when people drew type on paper, that was very different when it became a digital font. It was changed, but we would, it was exactly the way I drew it. And as loose and as irregular as I made it purposely. And I refused to change it. My boss, Robert Norton, said, the P and the Q don't look the same, they're at different angles. I said, yes, that's the way it's going to stay. So in that sense, there is uh, like so, decision in comics and letter form have been taken thinking of handwriting. Yes, it would, there was no aim to make everything straight and regular and the way you would do it when you were making a regular typeface. It was on purpose that it wasn't that way. You know, I made sure that it didn't keep it the same. So it's like something in between handwriting and typography. Do you yeah. agree on this? Yeah, it, it would be as close as I could get to doing handwriting. You could make a signature, but that would be reproduced the same every single time, which is not a signature. So it is not handwriting, but it's as close as you could get with digital tool. tools. Most typefaces now are just a bunch of straight lines. Sans serif, they don't even have serifs on typefaces anymore. You know, so there's a lot of life missing in type now. You don't have to make it perfectly straight, but you can if you want to. And that's part of it as well. You need to somehow get some life back into them because they're just digital straight lines. Can, can you do like a typology of the most common uses of Comic Sans? It's when people self-publish, I think. It's when they choose the fonts. And that's what, that's when it was made, is when we were, had the ability. In the mid-90s, we first had the opportunity to publish our own everything, from signs, t-shirts, newsletters, CVs, anything. You're doing it yourself. You used to have to bring it in to somebody and they would make a professional judgment on what it should look like. Now we're just printing it off. So people are choosing to do this and it's all self-publishing. So 
I think that's where it's getting used a lot. When people are making all the decisions, they're deciding what the product is, what it looks like, and who to sell it to. And they could just be the owner or they could be the cook. I found the biggest restaurant in Riaz using Comic Sans on the t-shirts, on the menus. It's, it's the one at the end of the road and it comes down. And then in the little village of 50 people, the only restaurant in town, they use it on the dessert menu. Their signage is in it. The only hotel in town, their wine menu is in it. It was everywhere in Provence. The, I asked the, the gentleman, Nico, who, who made the sign, the, made the menu. He picked Franklin Gothic. He knew the typefaces' names. And he said, when I put in the name of the wine, I chose Comic Sans. So it's Franklin Gothic. Comic Sans says what it is. You know, what, what type of wine. And he said, I chose it because it stood out. And I wanted the wine to stand out from the regular text, so it's a bit of a <laughs> funny looking menu, but <laughs> you have all this Franklin Gothic with all these blotches of Comic Sans all over it, so you can pick out where the wine is. People who use typography as amateur, why do you think they like Comic Sans so much? I think because it's not like what you printed out that paper with. It's not a text typeface like in school. They can choose what they want and they don't know much about it so they choose something very different. And it's not a text typeface. It's not a typeface really to them. And they just said, I, I like it. They don't have big explanations. Often they just say, I like it. It's, you know, the others are just typefaces. He said it would have personality, he said it would, it has more fun, he used, you know, the, the man that owned the hotel was like, this, this is, I, it, it meant it's something, it had life and body and he was using all these words that we should have filmed him. <laughs> I think it's funny and fun and interesting that people use it and to have everybody from the Pope's people of the Vatican using it to people at CERN using it. It's, it's just funny. I think it's funny. If I could have thought of doing that, it would have been the best practical joke I ever made. You know, yeah. you could have actually planned to have these things happen. It would have been, you'd be a genius. It's been described as kind of, I was at the right place at the right time, which is true. Because we were building software for today where we all have laptops and, and computers in our pocket. In 1994, nobody had a computer in the house pretty much. So we were building software for regular people to have in the house. And this font was made for a product for regular people to use. And they've gone and used it a lot. This function of in-between writing and Typography is really, really important because we, we, we need something like this. Comic Sans is really criticized a lot and there is this ban Comic Sans people and like on the web there is a lot of um, uh, article about the bad, use, bad uses of Comic Sans. They don't understand how you make type, obviously. They don't understand typography at all because to know that you make type for purposes and reasons and specific cases. Maybe it wasn't made for them, but they chose to use it. And the reason it's there is because they could self-publish that sign. So that the, the process is the problem, maybe. It's not the font. You know, it's the fact that people can do it themselves now. If they couldn't, they would have written it up there by hand with marker, probably. The process is you're designing specifically for products, and that was done for a product. It's a perfect example of typography. And um, don't get me wrong, it's not the, the best clean graphic example. Typography is not fine art. It is design, and it should function, but design means to function correctly for who it's intended for.
And that does function for who it was intended for. What's wrong with the people that have nothing better to do than moan about a sign? They can read that. Why would you go and waste your time yeah. moaning about something that isn't hurting anybody and it actually is doing what it's supposed to do? And I think that's funnier. It get, got a reaction. When I was in art school, the only thing I wanted to do was to get a reaction. If you made something boring that nobody noticed, that was the worst thing. If you made something really terrible that nobody really wanted to look at, that was worse. But if you made something that people talked about, made them look, that is good art to me. And it's not art, but I'm glad people notice. Anything that's funny? Just go for it. Thank <laughs> you.